Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrug Gaming Theatre.com video, we're going to be discussing what we know about the PlayStation 4 Neo, also known as the PS4.5 or the PS4K, and it'll probably be named something completely different when it finally launches. This video is going to be somewhat of a roundup, going through what we know about the system, discussing what it means for current PS4 owners, for example, if you already have a machine at your home, whether you should maybe wait buying a PS4 if you're close to clicking the buy button on Amazon or some other website, and finally, me throwing in my general two cents. So, I guess the first things first, how likely is it to happen? How likely is it that this machine is really being worked on, that it actually exists somewhere? Well, there have been a lot of reports. Some have come from Kotaku, which happened back in March. We've had separate reports from the Wall Street Journal. Eurogamer have also supposedly uh, verified its existence, and various insiders or developers have, at the very least, murmured that something is afoot at the land of Sony. And it's quite interesting because another report from Giant Bomb actually gave quite a comprehensive list of specifications of the machine, and we'll go through those in just a moment. So I guess the logical next question is, is the machine actually going to be announced during E3? Which, as you know, is going to be taking place in the next few days in Los Angeles. It's either that, or it's going to be TGS, which is going to happen in September. Realistically, those are the only two dates well, only two events really this year, which we could see an unveiling of the PS4.5, assuming that it doesn't slip back a little. The reason it may slip back is because of Scorpio, which I want to talk about in another video. I don't want to bog this down by talking about too many different systems, because otherwise it's going to become pretty messy. But suffice to say, the Scorpio is going to be more powerful than the PS4.5. The Scorpio, just for clarification's sake, is the upgraded version of the Xbox. But um, that, once again, supposedly, I don't want to say the stuff is verified by Microsoft, which ultimately would confirm it, otherwise it's just a rumour. But supposedly, the Scorpio will be considerably more powerful than PS4.5, so whether Sony are going to want to wait a little bit, or whether the PS4.5 is going to come out this year, the latter half or the latter quarter, should I say, of this year, we'll just have to wait and find out. So, the next logical question, because I just mentioned performance, what type of hardware do we actually have inside the machine? Now, I've already done fairly comprehensive technical analysis and breakdowns of the PS4.5. So if you want to check those out, you can find a link in the video description because I don't want to go through everything in this video because it's going to turn into a pretty darn lengthy video otherwise and it's already going to be pretty up there in terms of uh, time. But the basic gist of it is that the CPU is going to supposedly, once again, these specifications have not been confirmed by Sony, <coughs> but supposedly the CPU is going to receive about 500 megahertz upgrade, which means it's going to be about 2.1 gigahertz compared to the 1.6 of the current system. And from what we understand, it's still going to use the same similar CPU architecture, which is currently the AMD Jaguar. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a small upgrade, maybe to the next iteration of the Jaguar, which is known as Puma, because there are some definite improvements which would potentially convince Sony to opt with this hardware. Not necessarily in terms of raw performance, but the fact that you can have about 50% more frequency with nearly half the TDP over the previous generation, which in this case would once again be, um, would be Jaguar. <clears throat> so to squeeze that extra performance while not breaking the TDP bank, which would obviously be the amount of uh, heat generated, the amount of power consumed. It is possible that Sony will want to do that, but realistically it's not going to be a massive performance delta uh, between the um, two processors if they were running at the same clock speed. In terms of the number of CPU cores, it's all very much the same. Eight CPU cores, um, so very much a similar layout. The GPU is the thing that's getting the most tuning. Um, we're going to be looking from eight compute, 18 excuse me, compute units at 800 megahertz, 
with the original PlayStation 4, that's 1152 uh, shaders, just for the sake of clarification, to double that number. So 36 compute units and obviously double the amount of shaders. But the difference is it's running at 911 megahertz. Some folks are immediately saying that's Polaris based architecture. <clears throat> Very interestingly, smack right on the RX 480. The difference is with the RX 480, which is the upcoming GPU from AMD, um, the RX 480's clocks are supposedly much higher, which would mean that the RX 480 on the desktop is definitely going to have higher performance potential. With that said, you're still looking at a massive improvement in raw GPU performance. You're looking at about 4.2 teflops compared to 1.84, and CPU performance is 102 G-flops for the original base PS4, whereas the new PS4, the Neo, is 134 G-flops, so once again, quite the, quite the improvement. Memory bandwidth has also increased as well, you're looking at 176 gigabytes per second of eight um, of eight gigabytes of GDDR5 in the original PS4. Same amount of memory, eight gigabytes, but this time running at 218 gigabytes per second. It's unknown if, as I said earlier, we're going to be looking at Polaris-based architecture. If it is a Polaris-based architecture, that probably means that you've got large improvements in bandwidth efficiency anyway simply because of what Polaris is able to achieve um, and that's most likely seeing a 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory running at 6800 megahertz compared to 5500 of the original machine. I think that's enough of the technical specifications because once again I've done all this exhaustively in another video but all you need to know is that this machine is about 2.25 at least in terms of GPU performance more powerful than the original. Okay so next logical question what the balls happens if you buy a Neo or you stick with the original PS4 how do games run differently across both machines and more specifically are we going to need to buy a Neo version of the game? So let's say right now you own a game on your PS4, let's say Uncharted. Does that mean that that game's hosed? It's not going to work in the vanilla system, or oh, sorry, on the Neo? Or let's say you go to the store, you pick up a game because it says PS4, you come home, shit, you didn't realize it was for Neo only. No, that's not what's going to happen. From what we understand, the games are going to still be on the same disc, but they're going to have a Neo mode. What this essentially means is that the game's going to boot with higher levels of fidelity if it's running on a Neo-based machine. Now, what those higher graphical levels are going to be are down to the developer. For example, you could see the native resolution of the game running at higher uh, numbers. For example, 1080p on the original, 1440p on the PS4K. You could see a higher frame rate, for example, 30 FPS versus 60 FPS in the Neo. You could see, just see general improvements to lighting, texture quality, improvements to model quality. You could see better draw distances. You could see maybe dynamic lighting. You could perhaps even just see, let's just say, an overall visual upgrade. The best way of describing this would be if your friend has a GPU in their machine, let's say it's a GTX 760, and you have a machine which has a GPU which is, let's say, an R9 290X. I'm just pulling out a couple of GPUs there which are very well known and have been around the block. There's obviously quite a bit of difference in terms of performance between those two GPUs, but you can still play essentially the same game, you're not downloading different assets, it's not like there's this version which is specific to that GPU, no, you just run the game at different graphical settings. Presumably, however, that's not for you to do, that is for the developer to do, so there's not going to be a switch which, innate, which you enable and then runs the game at higher graphical quality, no, it once again is for the developer to do. This is particularly true given the fact that the Neo, once again, allegedly, 
does have an additional 512 megabytes allocated to the game. Now it's very important to remember that that's not an extra 512 megabytes in the system. It just means that 512 megabytes which was previously locked away, reserved for OS functionality or what have you, is now freed up and available for the game to run. So obviously if a vanilla PS4 tried to run that game, you would get errors and basically the game wouldn't work because it would be trying to write to memory that it just didn't have access to. On the same subject of games and versions, there are also some other caveats. You cannot have a Neo-only game. What I mean by that is that you can't release a game which would only run on Neo hardware. So for the sake of argument, if there's a title that a developer feels is way too ambitious for a vanilla system, let's say it's an open world game and it has way too many enemies, too much stuff in it for the vanilla system to handle, at least with a decent amount of visual fidelity, it just will not appear on the Neo either, at least according to these uh, reports. Similarly, DLC and free updates, that type of stuff will also be required to also see a release on the vanilla system. The only concern for vanilla owners is how well is it going to run on the vanilla system. And this also leads us to another rumour about virtual reality, which I'll touch on in just a second. But, for example, let's say that on the vanilla PS4, the game runs at 900p sub 30 FPS. Let's say it goes to 25, 24, 20 even FPS at a lot of times, and it's an action oriented title. Whereas on the on the Neo, it runs at, let's say, 30 FPS locked, 1080p, with better graphics. Yeah, it's released on the vanilla system, but would you opt to buy it on the vanilla system? Well, probably not. How strict, stringent, and the quality control levels that Sony are going to employ with this are, of course, right now, down to our imagination. Speaking of imagination... What about the PS4 VR? So, the PlayStation VR is, of course, natively powered by the PS4. And the VR headset doesn't really do any processing. The external breakout box does process the image, but that's to make it from 3D warped back to a traditional 2D image, which is on your TV, as well as some audio processing. Supposedly... There were some reports that were floating about, um, which basically said that the PS4, the VR, running on the vanilla PS4, was crap. In fact, a report from Edge actually said it was terrible. Other developers have gone on record, which basically adds to the fact that Neo is real, but ignoring that, a lot of folks have said, no, that's not true. The vanilla PS4 runs virtual reality perfectly. I would hasten to add it depends on the game because the developer who said it was running terribly was not revealed. So in other words the developer who said that the vanilla PS4 ran VR experiences terribly because we don't know the project that they were working on and the game that they were trying to port or the level of experience we don't know whether we can take that with any with any credence for example let's say that and I'm not saying they were but let's say they were dice and they were trying to bring one of their new upcoming titles to PlayStation VR well look how the games bloody Look how visually impressive DICE's titles are, and then tell me, honestly, do you expect a full VR experience at 120 FPS on a vanilla system? Probably not with that level of visual fidelity. On the other hand, a smaller indie title, which has considerably less textures, lighting, and all the other bollocks that we know about by now, yeah, you can see how that would run fine on a vanilla system. So maybe that is something to do with it, but whether you should have a truckload of salt, no salt, take it seriously, not take it seriously, it's all down to you. Um, finally, does size matter? 
and is the PS4.5, the PS4K, the Neo, whatever the hell you want to call it, is it the slimline PS4? Probably not. Um, some people have said that it is smaller. A few folks have have gone on record and analysts have said, yeah, it might be a bit smaller, but it's probably not. I mean, just for the simple fact that, yeah, it's possibly going to be manufactured on 14nm, but even so, one would imagine that it's going to require still an awful lot of power, and I could probably, I haven't done the numbers on this, but it's probably not going to be that much difference in terms of TDP if you factor in the more powerful CPU. It does depend on the CPU architecture, as I just mentioned earlier. The number of compute units, the fact that the RAM's running slightly higher clocks as well does draw extra energy. All of this stuff, potentially a faster uh, hard drive as well, we don't know. All of that would suck up more energy, but you're offsetting that by the fact you're on a smaller manufacturing process. So you might end up with roughly the same amount of energy consumption, which might mean that you're in roughly the same amount of heat output, give or take a little bit. So they might keep the current size of the PS4 for the 4.5, and they might release a separate uh, slimline model for the basic model PS4. But what about pricing, which I guess is the final absolute final well obviously Sony haven't announced this but the current price that's being touted is 399 US dollars which is upsetting some folks because they're saying to themselves well I just spent X amount on my PS4 because it depends when you bought it obviously launch individuals are gonna spend more than let's say if you just ran out to yesterday and bought a PS4 and I kind of expected that to last, I'd say, five or six or seven years. Now, in 2000 and from 2013 to when the system's released, it's basically three years. And Sony are telling us, well, apparently they're telling developers and how much, once again, how much stock you want to put into this, down to your interpretation. But they are saying that, well, we might not actually have a PS5. There might just be iterative hardware. So in short, in two, three years time, there will be another Neo, an upgraded Neo, which is going to be more powerful, and then a more powerful one, and a more powerful one, and a more powerful one. In short, you're going to constantly need to upgrade the hardware if you want the best looking game possible, or the best gaming experience possible if you're playing on a PlayStation branded device. Anyway, I think that's just about it. That goes through all of the rumours, that goes through all of the information. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll be doing one more of these, possibly on the Scorpio, uh, probably tomorrow. But until then, let's prepare ourselves, shall we? Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.